Hey, Herman here. Today with a video on how to use the wired ports on a remote access point. Question came in over Twitter and I decided to create a video to demonstrate how you can configure this. So, some of the remote APs have multiple ports. Uh, basically, a lot of the APs have multiple ports and APs don't need to be remote APs in order to use the secondary port or the third or fourth port. So let me show you uh, how to configure it. Configuration is done on the AP group. So I have an AP group here, remote AP, and I have one remote AP connected and uh, that's a uh, AP203H in uh, my case. And that AP has uh, one uplink port and two downlink ports. In order to configure the wireless access, so the wireless you configure it uh, right here, uh, and where it is similar but in a different place you need to go into the profiles and if you don't see the profiles here that could be that by default here under preferences uh, the advanced profiles are not ticked so if you don't see it tick this button and make sure that the profiles will show up here so in the profiles for this uh, remote ap group uh, i can open up here the ap and this is where you can see the interface configuration so you can see there are five interface configurations port zero is the uplink port and that's uh, on the default wired port profile and i would leave it like that uh, so they can uh, uplink then uh, on ethernet uh, one and two that's where i need to do uh, my configuration uh, you can see that i created here a wired port profile wired access sim uh, on this port uh, too and this Port profile, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's very similar to the ports on the controller. So also the ports on the controllers can be used uh, for wired access and doing authentication. Uh, and let's have a look through the configuration steps of this uh, of this wired port. So the wired port profile has this name, and uh, what you can see here, what you can figure here, is if the port needs to be shut down. So you can also completely block the wired ports on an AP. Uh, if it can uh, contain the remote AP backup interface, uh, which means that if there is no connectivity with the controller or it's impossible to connect to the controller, then you can connect a laptop and there's a small captive portal where you can do some uh, basic troubleshooting. Uh, stuff like spanning tree is configured here as well. Then under this wired port profile, I have a few sub profiles. Uh, one of it is the Ethernet link profile. So this is where I can enable uh, energy efficient Ethernet or where I can able, enable or disable the power over Ethernet. So some of the remote access points can provide power to an IP camera or an IP phone or so on. And uh, yeah, with this uh, tick box, you can enable it or disable it. Then we have the wired AP sub profile, and this is uh, specifically for configuring the access. And a few things important here. So first of all, uh, wired AP is enabled. So that will enable the wired AP functionality. On some of the APs, you can daisy chain the second port to a second AP. So that's on the 303P, for example. Uh, but I don't use that uh, here. Then really important here is uh, the trusted tick box so when a port is trusted in aruba and that's the same on campus ap's it's the same on remote ap's it's the same on mesh ap's it's the same on the ports on the controllers a trusted port will not do any authentication so basically we need to make sure that the port is untrusted in our case so we can do authentication if you just want to tunnel the traffic to port uh, 33 um, I can tick here the trusted and then I have just stretched my VLAN 33 to that uh, port on the uh, remote AP. Then here we have the forwarding mode and this is very similar to uh, an SSID so we can have it in tunnel mode. All traffic will be forwarded to the controller. We can have it in bridge mode where traffic locally breakouts on the AP and we can have it in split tunnel mode for remote APs only where uh, the policy will decide if the traffic is switched locally or sent centrally to the controller. Then here for access mode, uh, because we can also put it in trunk mode, you can configure the VLAN, that's the default VLAN, uh, as well for the trunk, the different ports. 
So when I have a port in non-trusted mode, it's also important that I have a triple A profile. So this is where we select the triple A profile and I created one wired port off. And uh, what you have in the triple A profile is uh, first of all, the things that you see with wireless as well. So the initial role, the Mac authentication default role, the dot one X default role, uh, stuff like uh, if you want to do uh, layer two authentication fill through, if you want to do radius accounting, uh, yeah, all that good stuff. And if I have a look in the triple A profile, so uh, here I go to authentication, triple A profiles and the wired port off uh, here is also where we can assign uh, authentication servers. So with the dot one X authentication, you can here enable a two one X, and with the a one x needs to go to a server group for authentication. So I forwarded it to my ClearPass server. Same for Mac authentication. And uh, also that's going to the ClearPass server. So I can do all the things that I can do on the wired network and the good stuff that you have seen in other workshops. You can do everything on the wired port of a remote AP or a campus AP or a controller port uh, as well. Uh, radius accounting and the uh, change of authorization servers. Um, everything uh, the same and basically this is it so uh, if we have the profile uh, assigned to these ports uh, then push the configuration then as soon as we put in clients um, it will follow the wired port profile it's untrusted it will do uh, authentication go through the triple a profile and uh, allow the access so you can see i have wired clients connected to my system one of it is uh, connected here to the 203H. So um, yeah, this is a dot one X authentication. Also, I have two IP cameras connected to a mesh uh, AP. So this is very similar, but this is uh, using Mac authentication. You can't see too much details uh, in here. So let's have a look on the CLI level. If I do a show user pipe include wired, I will see the wired users. And here you can see uh, as well. So this one is a dot one X wired, the T440 S it's connected to uh, the 203 H it's connected on port number two. So uh, you can also see that it's connected to port number two. Also for my IP cameras, you can see that it's connected to my 205 H mesh AP. Uh, so one of it, IP camera 07, it's connected to port number 2. And uh, camera 06, it's connected to port number 3. And uh, you can see that it's Mac authenticated here. Uh, and even here it has a special uh, role. So all the roles that are applied, um, it will all work here. So hope this helped. Uh, it was a short video, it went fast. Uh, but hope that it will, this will get you started onto configuring the wired ports on uh, the remote AP bus as said you can also do this on a campus AP if you have spare ports or you can even do this uh, same with the wired profile on a controller free port and run captive portal uh, run dot one x run mac authentication all the same so thanks a lot for watching please subscribe to the channel uh, comment to the videos and like them so thank you very much my name is Herman Robers